Can you believe it? People criticising me, saying I shouldn't have pushed you off. Eh? I should just let you climb all over me for a video, shouldn't I? Let's see how well it works like this. Ow. If you've followed my channel or you've seen some of my other videos, you may have seen that I quite often use animations in my videos. And I don't mean just where I throw a picture up here or here. I mean where I have an object appear and then I can move it and track it around the screen. And I've had a few people commenting, uh, well, saying that they like the look of it and a few people questioning how do I do it. It's kind of been well documented by some of the big videographers, the likes of Peter McKinnon, uh, that you can do that sort of tracking using software like Adobe After Effects. But some people, the likes of myself, don't have Adobe After Effects, either because you know it's extra money that they're not going to fully get the use out of, or you might be like me and just a bit too stubborn. So I'm going to show you today how I go about doing it in Adobe Premiere. That's all I ever use for my video editing is Adobe Premiere or Premiere. I don't know. So the first thing we'll do is we'll load up Premiere Pro. So let's say, for example, I want to put a green autofocus point over my finger. And as I move my hand around the screen, I want that AF point to follow wherever my fingertip goes. The first thing you're obviously going to do is film your base footage, i.e. your finger moving around. Then you need to add the green AF point as another layer over the top of it. Now, this can either be a picture file that you bring in or something that you create in Premiere. If I wanted to make the box in Premiere Pro, I go up to new, I go to file into new and onto legacy title. And this is what I quite often use whenever I show the diagrams of, you know, the, the light lines and depth of field perceptions. It's always done using legacy titles. So you just create a new legacy title. And then generally for light lines, I will just create a yellow line and then I can move it around later. But for this instance, we'll just use the rectangle tool. We'll get rid of the fill. We'll change the outline color to, uh, to green. Okay, so that now gives us a green box as a layer that we can drag and drop onto our timeline. Now, all the timeline is doing is saying when do we want the picture to appear and when do we want it to disappear. So all I'm going to do is find a point on the timeline where I put my finger up here and I'm going to drag and drop the box onto the timeline for there. Now, the box is currently sitting in the wrong place. It's not over my finger how I want it to be. So I'm going to go up into effects controls and you'll see somewhere around about here, I've got position and scale. And this is where we'll start using keyframes. Now, keyframes are really the key to doing anything tracking. A keyframe is basically a reference point, an anchor point where we can say to the program at that exact moment on the timeline, this is where I want that object to be. This is the scale, the height, the size that I want it to be, any rotation, etc. And if you put multiple keyframes in at different points, one after the other, Premiere Pro will automatically transition from one set of properties to the next as it moves in between those keyframes. So we can use keyframes to tell Premiere Pro where we want the object to be at certain points in the frame, and then it'll automatically move it for us. So that's what we're going to do. We'll start with the box, say, here. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on this little icon to the left of position that says toggle animation. So that's going to input our first keyframe. Now at the minute I am still on that first keyframe. So wherever I move the object to, that's where it's going to start off. So these two numbers here, the first one is our X coordinates left and right. The second one is our up and down. So I'm just going to drag and drop. So I'm just going to drag that box so it's now over my finger. So that's where I'm going to start. Now, I'm going to want to move my finger from, say, here to here. 
So what I need to do is as I move my finger now, I need to bring the box with me. So I'm going to go to the point in the timeline where my finger is now here. The box is still over there, but my finger is now here. And you can see we're at a different point on the timeline. So I can now add another keyframe in for this particular frame as a reference. There. And now over this next keyframe, I'm going to move those X and Y coordinates to bring the box over my finger. But now what you'll see is as I'm moving my finger, the box isn't quite keeping up with my finger. That's because I'm not moving my finger in in a continuous smooth motion. So this is where we can add more keyframes in between hand. So the more keyframes you add into the sequence, the smoother that transition is going to be, the smoother the flow is, because you're pricking up more key points for the program to be able to make sure that the box is in the right place at the right time. And that's essentially what After Effects does anyway. The difference is with After Effects, you can say to it, I want you to track the subjects that's here and it's starting there and I want you to finish up here. But After Effects will track the pixels that are in there. So it's basically adding lots of keyframes in automatically, whereas with Premiere, you have to do it yourself. And the same principle applies for whenever I do the animated graphics with, you know, the, the, the camera diagram and the yellow lines, for example. So the camera diagram, the picture, is just a clip art picture of a camera that I've created. And that never actually moves. That just stays exactly where it is, say, there. But now I'm going to create two yellow lines. So we'll go back into new legacy title. And we'll add just one random horizontal line across the screen there. Now, I'm not going to put two lines on the same title because if I do that, that, that is going to keep both lines fixed relative to each other, but I want them to be two separate entities so that I can move them independently of each other. So we'll drag and drop both of those onto the timeline on two separate layers. And then I'm going to move one of the layers and bring that down slightly. So now that they're running parallel to each other here. And then this is where the headachey part comes. Because for this, I'm going to use a mix of not only the position, but also the rotation as well. Because that's essentially what I want to do. I want the two lines to rotate about a particular point so that they can overlap and I can move them. So the first thing I want to do is work out the rotation. Now, the good thing is that whatever rotation I do to one line here, I'm going to do the complete reverse to the other line. So if I, say, move the top line three degrees in one direction, I know that the bottom line needs to go minus three degrees back the other way to keep them kind of linked to each other. So we'll see what three degrees looks like. Yeah, we'll go for a little bit more than that. We'll go for, say, five degrees for that one, and we'll go for minus five degrees for that one. Now, at the minute, they're in completely the wrong place. So same again, I'm just going to move the X and Y coordinates until the lines line up where I want them to be. So we'll say there. So I know both of those are now in the right starting position. So that's keyframe number one for me. So I can keyframe position and rotation. So now we'll jump up the timeline and we'll add another set of keyframes in for both the rotation and the position for both layers again. So now I want to make it seem like those lines are kind of moving about a particular point. And I want the ends of them to stay attached to the edges of that camera lens. So that's going to be my reference point. I know they're currently touching the edge of the camera. I want those to stay where they are. But the moment I change the rotation from, say, 5 to 8, suddenly those lines have now shifted from the midpoint. So both edges are now jumped, and that edge is in the wrong place. So all I'm going to do is, without moving anywhere off the timeline, I'm going to stay on exactly the same frame. So I'm on the keyframe. I'm going to move the position of both of these lines on the x-axis to get the y-axis to get them both back to the edge of the camera. So now, 
moving between keyframe one to keyframe two, Premiere Pro is automatically transitioning both the position and the rotation. But because the edges of the lines are staying in the same place between keyframe one and keyframe two, they never move in the transition period. Everything else is what is moving and it looks like a nice smooth animation. The same thing applies as before though. If there was, you know, whatever you were doing, you were trying to time it to something else that's not moving at a steady pace, then you may need to add another keyframe in somewhere in the middle, wherever you've gone completely out of sync, add another keyframe in and it'll bring it all back together for you. So that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully, if you are someone who was hoping to add a little bit more dimension to your videos using animations, but you didn't want to have to buy After Effects or go through the hassle of learning how to use it, now you can do it in Premiere instead. As always, guys, if you have any questions or queries, comment boxes down below. Thank you so much for stopping by, and hopefully, I will see you in the next video.